Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this pistol that you see in my hands and you saw throughout the intro. This is a Gen 5 Glock 17. So full size 9mm pistol but with the Generation 5 updates from Glock. So uh, before we get into that let's back up and sort of see where this came from. Or for those that don't know Glock and SIG with their P320 at least their military version of it and of course Glock's military version of the Gen 5 um, basically went head to head for the modular handgun system contract award from the army. Uh, Glock lost out, at least as of right now, that's being disputed in the courts, and the uh, SIG P321. Now, um, the benefit of that was that we get a new and improved gun, and one of the qualifications for the MHS contract was that they had to have a uh, mean stoppages in terms of malfunctions greater than one in 2,000. So you can't have more on average than one malfunction for every 2,000 rounds. The only two pistols submitted, at least that I know of, that made that, um, that that qualification, if you will, is this one. Uh, well, of course, the version they submitted, not this exact one, and the P320. So certainly did well in terms of reliability. There were some other reasons why the P320 was chosen. Again, all that stuff's getting worked out in court. What we're going to do today is just take a look at some of the differences with this pistol, put a whole bunch of rounds through it, and uh, do an accuracy test, take a look at the ejection pattern with a few different loads, because I know with some of the newer Glocks, that has been a problem. I've reported on it here in the past. And I think at least looking around now, I'm one of the first people um, to get one of these out in a while. There's a few videos on YouTube of folks that got invited down to Smyrna, Georgia to the Glock factory to check it out and re release the videos a few days ago. I was not invited. That's probably not a coincidence with some of the things I've said about Glock in the past. But I do like Glocks. Um, they just, they aren't perfect. No gun's perfect. So if they have uh, flaws, I'll point them out. And we will do the same here today with this particular gun. But one thing, like I said, we're going to look at is the ejection pattern. That's a big deal. Nobody wants brass to the face and the accuracy. One of the big changes to this gun is that unlike the traditional Glocks with their polygonal or polygonal rifling, depending on whom you ask, this one has their marksman barrel, which has more traditional rifling. It also has a different crown out there on the end. So we'll test the accuracy of that and go over the frame differences like I talked about. And uh, that should pretty much wrap it up at the end. Malfunction. It could have been me actuating the slide release. That's what it would look like. So that's kind of my guess right now. Same exact thing. Not sure what's going on there. For what it's worth, mag pull mag. That's worked fine in every other clock we've had it in. empty that time. As promised, we'll check out the ejection pattern with a few different loads here. So first and foremost, we have some 115 grain total metal jacket bullets here from Minuteman Munitions. Uh, it's primarily what we've been shooting through the pistol today. We'll see how that does in terms of ejection. And then uh, we'll put a couple defensive loads through there as well. There you go. Lock back on the last round, so no issues. It seemed to eject just fine. Uh, next up will be the uh, Spear Gold Dot load. This is the 147 grain G2 load, so heavy for caliber. We'll see how that does. There you go, locked open on the last round. Ejection, just from what I'm seeing there on the ground, was a little bit more positive. And the last load we have here is the uh, HST 124 grain load. We're going to test all these accuracy wise here in just a second, um, but want to make sure they function first, right, and eject properly. So this is generally one of my go-to uh, carry or defensive loads for pistols. So hopefully it does well. There you go. Did well, and that by far. Just looking at the pile of brass beside me, that had the, the most strong ejection. So, um, but all of them seemed fine. In fact, much better than some of the uh, Gen 4s I have, uh, and even Gen 3s for that matter, that have been produced recently. So that's a good sign.
For the accuracy portion, we're going to be using the CTK Precision Rest here. Target is downrange at 25 yards, and uh, we have a few different loads. First up is going to be ammunitions, 115 grain total metal jacket stuff. Um, for those who don't know, Glock's barrel here, they're claiming that it can shoot sub four inch groups at 50 yards, and that's the standard that they're made to with their new marksman barrel. So we will put that to the test here today and see if it'll do it. Uh, I should also point out that I'm using the factory plastic sights on this gun. Um, they're also offered with Ameriglo sights, and I picked this up over at GT Distributors, put that out, um, and the prices for each are below. And if you are eligible for Blue Label, they also have Blue Label pricing over there if they are in your region, of course, but um, they do offer the Ameriglo's, which absolutely are better sights in my opinion. One thing that I always say about Vox is that their plastic sights here are, are just really bad. Um, I don't personally like the sight picture. I don't find them terribly accurate. Um, at least they don't aid in accuracy. And I've seen them break so many times um, that really Glock, who sells themselves as a combat handgun, which generally they are, and I agree with, should be putting on steel sights at a minimum. So they are the polymer sights, but we will do what we can here with those. Just note the Ameriglows are a factory option. I will probably be putting some Trigicons on there. Uh, the HD is down the road. That's why I actually opted for the polymer. But we're going to run it as we got it. I did have to adjust the rear sight because it was way over to the side when I got it in. Um, so whoever assembled that, you might want to want to check on that. Anyway, target down range is 25 yards. We're going to do five shot groups and see how they do with uh, various loads here. Again, Minuteman Munitions is up first. All right, not too bad with that stuff. It's certainly not match ammo of any kind. We'll continue with that theme. We'll go with some Fioki 115 grain. I just wanted to do a couple sort of match defensive loads and a couple practice loads. So we'll see what that does. I uh, apologize for the wind if that's getting in the way. We're hoping a storm doesn't come in right now so and I can finish the video out. So Fioki. Not bad results again for non-match ammo. Next up, we're gonna go with the uh, Spear G2 147 grain that you guys just saw me shooting through the ejection portion of the video. See how that does, some heavy for caliber stuff. That one looked pretty good. To point out, I'm using a factory trigger. Now, while on that note, let's discuss that a little bit. So the trigger updates is not one of the big five that Glock's talking about in all their marketing, but the trigger on this gun is different. 100% is different. The trigger spring in the rear, uh, when you just assemble it, as you guys can see here in the photos, is different. It's sort of like a hybrid, at least my initial impressions, again, I looked at it once. Um, it's sort of like a hybrid of the New York trigger and the standard trigger. Um, the brake on this one is right at six and a half pounds on my Timney gauge. I checked it before I went out. And again, that's with a little polishing uh, 25 cent trigger job as it's commonly referred to. But it feels pretty similar to most. The one thing I would say is that it has less pre-travel. So basically, as soon as you depress that little uh, trigger safety on there, you feel the uptake. Very similar again to the New York trigger, but it's not as heavy as the old New York triggers are. So. I don't mind it at all. I've never minded Glock triggers. I really almost never put aftermarket triggers on them. I shoot them as is because they shoot fine for me, as you guys can see here so far. But just wanted to point out the trigger itself is different on these guns than any of the previous generations. So last up, we'll put through uh, some of that Federal 124 grain. This is the standard pressure uh, HST. Let's see how this does. Let's go check them out. I moved the target over in the wood line to try to get out of the wind a little bit. Uh, so first up, Minuteman stuff. Again, 115 grain total metal jackets, practice ammo. We're right at three inches with that group. Then down here with the Fioki. Right at two and a half inches with that particular load. Then I believe this was the G2. Definitely tightened up a little bit from what I can see. So, 
farthest point, it is right at two inches on the dot center to center. Then down here at the HST is definitely the best group. There's a little spider there on the target. I'm not sure if you guys can see him. Wants to play. With this one, with the HSTs, center to center, we are right at an inch and a half. So I would say that Glock's claim about their marksman barrel being able to shoot four inch groups at 50 yards is true. Uh, this one here seemed to shoot well. Although admittedly, for me, in most of my experience, I own a ton of Glocks, most of them would all shoot, you know, sub three inch groups at 25 yards with the polygonal rifling. But this one, if this uh, sample size of one is a indicator of anything, does tighten that up a little bit. Malfunction. Again, the same PMAG. I changed the ammo. That's Fioki. I think it's just this PMAG for whatever reason it does not like. Because um, it's the exact same one I reloaded. See if it'll finish it out. Yeah, it feels like it's, I don't know, it feels like it's uh, sticking a little bit at the back. Again, only this mag. Don't know why. Locked open. This may be somewhat of an awkward shot, but I'm trying to hide my camera behind the truck to block the wind. So basically I talked about the five big details. One of them we already talked about, which is the marksman barrel. What are the other four? So there's a few of them, right? So of course it has the ambi ambidextrous slide release. So the slide release can be actuated from either the right or left side of the gun. So for you lefties out there, it actually actuates. So unlike some of the other guns that claim to be ambi that you can't actually hit it, this one here, you absolutely can and it does work. Interestingly, on the, this particular gun, I would imagine they're all the same, on the right side of the gun, so if you're actuating it with your left thumb, it actually sticks out a touch more. I have no idea what the measure of it is, maybe half a millimeter, but when I look at it, it is obvious and you can absolutely see the difference. Um, it's interesting to note that I did do the ambi slide release, or slide lock, whatever you want to call it, but did not make the ambidextrous uh, magazine release. It is reversible, so it comes on the left side of the pistol, and you can swap it over to the right side should you choose to do so. High traffic today out here in the country. One car in a video, that's a lot. So that is uh, one of the big differences. The other big difference that folks are really excited about is the lack of finger groups out here on the front. I have a Gen 4 Glock 17 here for comparison. You guys can see sort of how they look. The finger groups there are something that a lot of people didn't like. I personally don't mind them at all. For me, they tend to line up just fine and feel very comfortable, but a lot of people really dislike the finger grooves on the Gen 3 and Gen 4 pistols. This one's sort of like the uh, Gen 2 in that regard, so no finger grooves, but it has the same texture that you find on the Gen 4 pistols, so it sticks to your hand a lot better than the old Gen 2s. Next one, the next change is going to be, it has a flared magwell, and it's also beveled, so if you look at the actual frame itself, there's a flare on the bottom of it, and then if you look on the inside, there's beveling on there, so I'm not sure how well that will come across here on camera, but you guys can see the slight flare there on the bottom and then the beveling, e easing, reloading. So that's another difference that they're touting. The other big one is the finish is different. So I'm not sure how apparent it will be on these two guns in this lighting condition, but on the right here is a Gen 4, and here we have our Gen 5. It's a little bit blacker, and that is a NDLC coating. So basically the slide on the Gen 5 has the same nitride or tenifer, or whatever Glock's calling it these days, finish, and then on top of that, they put the uh, NDLC coating on there. So it's supposed to be much more durable, much more corrosion resistant, um, all of that stuff. So that is something that they're touting as well. It looks good, I can tell you that. It feels slicker. Uh, when you touch it, it's definitely slipper, slipperier. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. So another difference is gonna be the magazines. So we'll sort of show you that real quick. The new mags have the uh, high visibility followers. So that's a good thing. It's not really a, gonna impact anything, but it's always better to know that you're out or know that you're running low than not to. And then the base plate is actually different as well. So I'm not sure how apparent, again, that is on camera, but here we have the Gen 5, and then of course the Gen 4, and they both have the cuts for ambidextrous slide release. Now the pistol is supposed to have cross compatibility with magazines. Today out here I've ran all uh, generation mags, so all the way up from Gen 2 up to the Gen 5, and have had zero issues with the exception of that P mag that you guys saw, um, and that one. It's just that one. I have three different PMAGs out here. 
all of them except for that one. The other two work fine. Uh, ETS mags work fine. 33 rounders work fine. Everything seems to work fine. So the gun has been reliable without issue, uh, with the exception of that magazine. Let's we'll talk about that magazine real quick. Um, at first, I thought maybe it was because I was running the light, because some early Glocks had issues with the light, so we took it off. Still had the same exact issue. It definitely just appears to be that magazine. My guess is that magazine is pushing up on the slide lock and making the slide lock to the rear. So whatever that is, probably just a tolerance stacking issue of some kind. So one interesting thing about this that I discovered as soon as I went to uh, disassemble it is that when you do so, you pull back just like you regular would on a Glock, let go, and then the slide just comes right up like that. So you don't have to slide it all the way forward like you would on the earlier versions, just to pull it forward a little bit, then you clear the rails. So that's kind of interesting. A few other differences, right? Let's talk about them. The uh, firing pin safety is different. It's not round like the traditional Gen 3 and Gen 4. Talked about the trigger is definitely different. No getting around it. The ambi slide lock and how it goes together is different. It goes together very similar to a Gen 2 with the two pin system rather than three pins. So you can see here again in our example, this is a three pin Glock, which most of the Gen 3s and Gen 4s out there are. So there's two pins up front and then we have the one pin in the rear. On our Gen 5 here, you guys can see that it is not. It is a two-pin system, so there's one pin here, one pin in the rear. Also, they changed the nose of the gun. So if you look out here on front, they have a beveled nose. In theory, they say that's good for holstering. I kind of agree with that. There's no reason not to. The Glock 26s and 27s have had that for years. One complaint I've seen on the internet already is that they beveled the, uh, the slide itself but didn't bevel the frame. Some people don't like that. I don't really care about that at all. So those are really the big differences. I'm going to keep putting some rounds through it, and then at the end, we'll let you know what we think of it overall. In some of the early reviews I've seen of these, folks have said that the recoil feels different on the Gen 5 uh, than the Gen 4 previous generations. I don't know. I do know it does have the dual recoil spring like the Gen 4, so in theory it should have at least that advantage, which does help. But I'm going to run a mag of uh, minute ammunition through each right here back to back and try to see if I feel a difference uh, between the two. So we'll see how it feels. And the same exact ammo here through the Gen 5. See how this feels. Well, if there's a difference, it's imperceivable to me. I don't, I don't feel a difference. Uh, with the Gen 3s and Gen 4s, I have felt a difference there. Uh, it does shoot a little softer in the Gen 4 configuration. This feels just like the Gen 4 to me, so... I don't feel any difference there between the two. I headed out this afternoon with 800 rounds. We've put about 600 rounds through this gun so far. We've had three issues, all with that one Magpul P mag like we talked about. Again, I strongly suspect it is actuating the uh, ambi slide lock and that's what's actually causing it to lock back. Other than that, it's ran flawless. With anything we put through it, we put several different loads through it, about 400 rounds of ammunition, some Fiocchi, some uh, Federal 115 grain, the little red polymer case one, uh, the HSTs and the gold dots like you guys saw eats it all up and uh, the ejection pattern looks good it inspires confidence on like some of the glocks that have come out in recent years that kind of dribble out um all in all i think it's a pretty decent gun uh the one thing i know people have already been commenting on is that they wish they had forward serrations on there for those of you guys that do a lot of press checking um, not a big deal for me but for those of you guys that that are into that um, I know you guys are looking for it. I'd also like to see it. Hopefully it'll be coming an optics ready version of this pistol coming down the road. Again, like we talked about, Glock factory sites, they should be embarrassed to put these on a gun. Uh, a company like Glock that produces a quality product should not have those on there. Um, but I don't want to beat a dead horse. Uh, mag release, I know a lot of guys want the Ambi, but a lot of lefties are also used to hitting it with their index finger. So not sure that'll be a deal breaker out there. And the price point is competitive with what's out there today. However, 
the landscape has changed greatly since Glock first came about in the 80s. Um, back then, it was really difficult to find an affordable, reliable, lightweight gun. Um, and that, that's changed. I mean, in 2017, there are a ton of guns that are competitive options for this that cost $100, $200 less, perform very similarly in terms of reliability. A lot of them are going to have better ergonomics than people who aren't used to Glock. Uh, the Glock grip angle is still there without the finger grooves. I personally like it, but I am so used to shooting Glocks that I'm kind of an exception to the rule. If you were to give this to a new shooter uh, and give them, like, let's say, an HK VP9 or, uh, 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 I don't know, uh, Walther PPQ, they're going to prefer the ergonomics of those pistols most likely versus this one. So and those guns right now, anyway, in today's market can be had for the same price or less than this one. So competition is stiff. Uh, I know there's a loyal following of Glock shooters out there, myself included, but I'm not sure if I'd have to run out and get one. And that said, if I was going to pick up a Glock 17, like today, I was like, oh, I need a Glock 17 in my life. This is the one I'd get. I would. I like the improvements that are on there. And uh, so far, so good in terms of reliability, ejection, all that stuff like we talked about. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the pistol, by all means, post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page, as always. That is generally the best place to get in touch with me. And uh, thanks for watching. If you guys are not subscribers, go ahead and click that subscribe button if you like what you saw. And uh, hope to see y'all in the next video.